the difference between this shadow color and this shadow color is not how dark the color is, it's how saturated it is. I'll do a few more leaves. This will be fun because I'll show a few different um, basic leaf patterns that I like to use. I use these a lot. Here, let's go up here and do some. Here's a fun one that I always do. Or should just I go? Just pure green that way. See the shape? Then another one right here, kind of making a V. And then, dip my brush in the white. Still got plenty of green in it too. I'll just fill in the space in between, kind of leave those points there. I'll just get rid of some of the excess down here and make another leaf. Mess with that in a minute. Then I'll make my stem coming down. There. And I'll I'll blend this out. This side's not as close not as directly facing the light, so we'll do more green on this one. And then to go even further, this side of the leaf is going to be facing upward more, so we'll make that one lighter. some of that, some of those brush strokes because they look like, a little bit like the veins in the leaf. Kind of like how those look. Okay, so that's, that's like a leaf going away from you. And then a sideways leaf. You go like this. Light green. True green under it, just just like this. You want this to get real thin as it comes across to this point. And then you know maybe maybe you'll have a little bit of color variation on this one on the inside too, like get some nice bright color here. You know, just by varying that highlight color, it just adds a little bit of texture to the leaf. Then that one needs a stem. Put one down here. Just right over the top of that guy, so we'll just wipe it off. That's already dry. Like that, and then um, what's another kind of leaf we can do? I already did these kind right here. Let's do a big one kind of facing this way. Kind of hit an angle like this. We'll go this way. Make that the underside right here. simple process here. It's just knowing. It's just knowing what to do. Just do a 
brighter side right there. Oh, you know what we didn't do too is is an underside. Let's do an underside of a leaf. That'll be fun. Okay, we'll go like this. Can you see that? Oh yeah, you can see it. See now I'm using my straight, true green. I'm kind of thinking that that one's going to be kind of funky. I don't know where that stem's going to go, so I better change the direction of that guy. Let's go. They're kind of heart shaped, these sunflower leaves. They have this distinct look to them. And then I'll add just a little bit of this shadow color. Not a lot, because I want a real bold green. But I'm going to darken it a little bit. Might be too much. Yeah, it's not too much. We'll just keep it towards the bottom. And these are a little more tricky, because I'm not going to actually do the veins here. Let's get rid of some of this dark green on this stem. So now I need a light green. And this is what I do when I don't have any wall available to mix paint on. I just use a lid, see? Okay, so now I've got white, green, and shadow. All three of them. No need to wash the brush because I'm using all three colors. And I'm going to do the veins. Now, leaf veins have a particular pattern to them. Ah, oh, shaky hands thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Might go like, I don't know, five or six of them. It's a pretty average number. I like these brushes for this reason. Because they have this real sharp edge on them. Okay, then these guys go out like this. See the pattern repeats. Then each of these will have a few of them. Like that. And the paint is starting to tack up. Okay, so then I'll, now I'm gonna smear my brush, empty it out on this big rag. And then I'll <clears throat> real gently and quickly come across this as it's tacking up. It'll kind of blur it. See how it got kind of blurred out. And then, it seems redundant, but I'll redefine it. And this gives it a much more rounded and realistic look. I wouldn't do this for every leaf, just a couple of them for a good highlight. Then we'll make that stem come down. That's going to connect to this big stem right down here. And I'll put some dark green on there.
Yeah, that didn't work very good. I guess it'd be kind of fun to show you how I did those big squash leaves. A couple of those. Right here. Same way. Same way, just a little more detail. Okay, so my base color is the shadow. It's got the uh, green and my blue-black mix for the shadow. <clears throat> and I just use that as a base. Oh man, don't put that on here. And these, you know, I kind of had those all distant and dreamy looking, so I don't want to put too much of that shadow coming. By having so much of the saturated green, it just looks like there's indirect light just bouncing off the inside of this patch, just going through the leaves, and there's light reflecting all over in these shadows. Okay, then I'll start bringing out the definition of a leaf. And I'll use this green that's unaltered. Squash leaves are the edges of them kind of flip up like this. See. While I'm at it, I'll just fill in some of this negative space. Okay, then I'm going to come back. More of that same green, but this time I'm going to add white. doing my uneven edge here. I'm going to try to get as sharp of an edge as I can as it comes down and meets the base of this. See now I could have done the light part first. You do the dark part first, light part first, whatever. It's where the colors end up that matters. Not so much your method of getting it there. Some more white. I'll do it on this edge for a highlight where it looks like it's getting some reflection going. Maybe a little here would be good. brush and as this dries that green will get more and more defined and really bring out that leaf right now it's still kind of wet so it has a because it has it has more of a hazed out look because of the wet paint so I'm just kind of redefining this edge you know just because I'm a friggin perfectionist Yeah, whatever. And so on. So you see, I, I, uh, to answer the question, how do you deal with the fast drying paint and the muddiness of the colors? Uh, you know, I work in small enough areas and have the colors pre-mixed and have a system down so I know exactly what I'm going to mix and what my method's going to be. The outcome is always a mix of all the colors I'm using anyway, so it doesn't matter that it, it gets muddy, but when it does, I just, you know, dry that brush out. I mean, I guess me explaining it right now is not nearly as helpful as demonstrating it. That's why the video. 
I do a lot of stuff wrong. I mean, I mean, these like like I said, these leaves are are not by a long shot completely accurate. The design. I mean, it's all it's just to make it believable. You know, so that when someone sees it, the colors make the whole thing believable. The corn is it looks 3D, but there's all kinds of things about that that's not like real corn. You know, and the sunflowers, I simplified. There's all kinds of things. I put a look at this. It's funny. Bald eagle. Hopi friend of mine came in and said, yeah, we don't really have bald eagles out there so much as golden eagles. And I felt kind of stupid putting a big old bald eagle. <laughs> it needs like a American flag or a Bible scripture behind it or something. <laughs> so, you know, too late to change. It's still an eagle. It's still cool.